shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to episode 20 of the A6 Intruder build. And it's been a long time coming, but we are finally to the point where we get to weather the upper surfaces of this intruder and make it nice and dirty uh, to represent you know, the full brunt of the operational tempo during Desert Storm. So, in the last installment, I went ahead and did the panel lines and then flat coated this so that those panel lines will not get removed as we play with oils on top of them. I've got my two friends here, uh, Naphtha and some sort of mineral spirit matte effect thinner thing. Got a whole shitload of brushes and we've got oils. So to go through these, let's see, gotta find a way to do this without dropping shit on the model itself. Okay, first up in the upper left corner, Got ABT 502 faded white. Then we've got, working our way down, cream brown, neutral gray, which seems anything but neutral or gray, sure. Light gray, which is more blue than anything else. The super, super useful Starship Filth. sepia, some Lucas Burnt Umber, which is more red-brown than I really want, uh, but I think maybe mixed with the black or some of the other effects. We can get some good stuff out of it. And then I went and picked up a new tube of black because I was not happy with my uh, student-grade <laughs> ivory black, so this is Windsor & Newton's Griffin Alkyd ivory black which they're supposed to uh, dry faster still give you working time but all you know dry nice and flat and all that kind of shit so we've got quite a uh, quite a few to pick from here and so it's about time to start moving I think before I get too much into these though it's also time to bring out our friends where's the front <laughs> uh, guns mr. weathering colors so for these we've got multi-gray grayish brown, a sandy wash, black, and I've got blue and white over there too, but they have no use in this. All right, where do I want to start? Now let's start on the flat, or on the leading edge slats. Oh, I've still got some brown on this thing. That's great. Let's do about stippling instead. You know, maybe the white will be useful after all. You know, unless you're putting, like, rust on it, it's pretty hard to go wrong. I know it's hard to see with the uh, glare coming off the light, but just adding that extra layer of kind of texture to what's going on in the paint already. All right, now we're gonna jump up to the walkways.
these are interesting because they're not only flat, but they're rough. If you're this kind of thing that foot traffic and any dust storms are flying through, shit like that, um, kind of builds up, right? So if you look kind of at the side that's done and the side that's not yet been treated, you can see how it's warming it up, providing a nice bit of contrast from the rest of the aircraft. It'll probably make the camera think that it's super blue. Okay, now we're going to come in and add the next layer on top of the sandy wash, which is going to be some brown-gray. Okay, now I'm going back and I'm adding black to the wing walks. As you can see, sort of back here, it gives it a... Combined with the dust and the brown, it gives it a really nice... Worn and ground-in kind of look. And that is how we get a nice... Worn down, still dark, but looking like it's seen plenty of abuse, wing walk. So I think the trickiest thing about the intruder right now is figuring out what to weather and in what order, because there's so much to do. So I think I'm going to focus on taking the fuselage and getting it done and then moving out to the wings. That way I'm not feeling quite as bouncy with all the shit that has to be dealt with. So for the fuselage, how about we start up here with the nose area. So I'm kind of mixing up some Starship Filth and Neutral Gray right now. Get a bit of a muddier type color in here. little bit of shit on there. I need to come in with naphtha. Kind of work it around. Maybe naphtha is not going to work as well on a uh, dead flat coat. <laughs> All right, good to know. Definitely uh, burns off a little bit fast.
that's not a good sound. Motherfucker. Great. Fuck. I hate the nose gear on this thing, by the way. It's the worst part of the kit, easily. Oh, please. I've got to fix this or it's going to drive me fucking crazy. Okay, so we're back at shit after repairing the nose gear. And I've been doing a little bit of work before turning the camera on. So mainly up here with the uh, inflate refueling probe. I've added some fuel stain goodness coming down the back, which is something pretty common to see on intruders of this era. And also a little bit of staining and whatnot sort of around the IFR from when it's refueling in flight and the, you know, the basket pops away and, you know, a little bit of excess fuel spurts out. That's what runs down the back, but it also sprays onto the nose and stuff, except you've got a nice little shadow essentially from the IFR that prevents it from getting right there in the middle. So got it on the sides, got it on the back, got it coming up the windscreen a little bit, which would make sense. Uh, I've been adding stuff around the intakes up top here. I need to refine that a little bit as I go, but I'm pretty happy with where it's at right now. And now I'm building up shit along the wing route, essentially. And for this, I'm playing with a couple different colors. Um, Starship Filth, Sepia. To kind of get the basics going. And then a little bit of a mix of black and off-white as well. Because we don't want everything to be this sort of like super gunky brown. So basically, put that in there. Stab, 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 stab. Angle the brush a couple different ways. Get variable height going on here. This is just an area where a lot of gunk seems to build up on these things, so I'm happy to go a bit overboard right here. And all I'm doing is getting a little bit of oil in the brush, dipping it in thinner, and then just kind of bringing it along the wing root edge here. Nothing fancy about this. Switch it up to a little tiny bit of sepia. Forget to add thinner. So that's sort of phase one of doing the wing roots. I've also got this whole portion here, this essentially bulging panels kind of above the wing root that have their own shit going on. And this is where I'm going to bring in the gray mix of the black and off-white. There's a little bit of neutral gray that got in here too, which is fine. Lining that very lightly. Let's go clean this brush off a bit so we're not tracking so much shit around. This is where we want it to be grungy but random. I think we're getting that pretty good. So if there's only one thing I could impart to everybody about weathering something as large as this intruder, it is have patience, go small, and work one area at a time. 
it's very easy on something, especially like a big gray paint job like this, to just blow it out of the water and go full tilt and go too much at once and overcook it, honestly. But if you go slow, you kind of keep it small, and you work in sections, it gradually starts to fill in. And so I've got a pretty good thing going right in here right now, kind of up the fuselage right to about here. And then it sort of, I haven't touched anywhere back here yet. And so as you can see, right down here along the walkway and right up against the wing route, it's filthy. There's foot traffic there. This is where air is flowing back over the aircraft, hitting shit that's been stepped on and whatnot. Um, most intruders show a awesome bit of staining right here on the top of the intakes. I'm guessing because of air rushing past and getting clogged up in here with all kinds of other shit and then kicking out. Um, but a lot of that, I'm assuming, carries up and over the side. I've got the fuel leak thing going on up here now. So basically just a lot of stuff happening, which builds up, and you can see this in reference photos like crazy, along the side of the fuselage right in here. As you get back further towards the tail, it tapers off. Now there's still weathering back here, you know, I'm not going to like just have the tail just be this clean thing that's going on right now. It's going to get weathered too, but it's not going to get weathered as heavily as the things up here. And so it's important as we work back to think about each section of the aircraft and what's going on and how it's weathering and what's getting onto it and why and all that kind of stuff. And that makes it a bit tricky because it's going to vary, right? So up on the top, you're probably going to see more salt staining. You're going to see some stuff coming off from foot traffic up here on this upper walkway. You've got some stuff coming out from the in-flight refueling probe and shooting fuel back this way as it just sort of pulls off, but you're not going to have like massive hydraulic leaks up top just because there aren't control surfaces up here that have hydraulics going on. You're not going to have the shit coming out of the uh, out of that little intake gap flying back across. It's not going to get up here. So it's different things. And as part of that, what I've been doing is changing up the colors that I use as I go across. So down here, there's a mix of basically white and black or off white and black. Um, to create sort of like a grayish tone. Starship filth, obviously, sepia, and then a few, you know, a few bits of light gray, which is that, again, light gray is that uh, blue looking tone there. Just to kind of deaden it up in places, change it up, make it all look a bit less uniform. But as I get up to the top here, I'm focusing more on that gray and white, and I'm going a lot thinner with it. And so to go thinner with it, let's see what this looks like. One thing about working on flat paint is this shit will bake in very fast. So you've got to keep that in mind as you're working. Very thin means that we get a little bit on the brush, you know, literally that much, and it's been dipped in thinner, so it's nice and thin. And then we just kind of draw it on like so, right? We dip, wipe off the excess dip again, and we come in here and we start blotting it. Move it around, break it up. If you think you got too much on, brush some off, wipe it off, come back with more thinner. At this point we're just trying to get it distributed a bit. Because again, it bakes in fast, so wipe a little bit of that extra off there. And then with more thinner. I think that's looking pretty good. Now, come in with a flat brush. We do our stippling. I think I still got too much on here. Move the worst of it. Brush it off. Come back. Now this gray will blend in a lot more to the coat as opposed to like a sepia or even starship filth. Okay. If 
unfortunately there's only so much that a flat brush like this can do before it starts looking like you got little lines going all over the place. So for the final act, bring in the stippler. Let it do its thing and sort of work it in a bit more. So there we go. We'll let that dry for a minute or two and then we'll put a little bit of white on top of it as well to kind of get the sort of broken up look that we have going on right here. Okay, so rather than making you all sit here and watch paint dry for as long as it's taken me to do this fucking fuselage, here we go. Fuselage is pretty much wrapped up. Uh, there's still a few more little things to do, but I'm going to kind of wait till later because it's more like touch-up-y type things and a few streaks and whatnot, and the oils need to dry first. Um, as you can maybe I hope kind of see with the lighting and the camera there is a pretty stark difference between what's going on with the fuselage here and the wings so far because the wings haven't really been touched except for a little tiny bit right here and a little tiny bit on this slat so there is definitely more to come and the wings are going to be filthier than the fuselage because we've got the hinge we've got the slats we've got all the control surfaces back here a lot of shit going on, a lot of hydraulics and stuff flowing through here. So, plenty of opportunities for messiness. Okay, so before diving into the wings, I went ahead and knocked out a bunch of little bullshit that basically just had to be taken care of at some point sooner or later. The main ones, as you may note here, we've got the crew ladders installed, we've got the little um, angle of attack probe jutting off the intake here. I have another thing over here. Those were fun to paint. Um, basically little tiny fuckers. This one actually had a sprue attachment on the metal cone. Uh, did all that, stuck them on a piece of, uh, like a little temporary glue dot, painted them with my super pricey Gaia Notes mirror chrome shit, and stuck them on. Uh, have this little light up here that I honestly don't know what it does. Uh, I think it might be just another formation navigation light type thing. Who knows? It's a weird place to have it right in front of the pilot. So, but it's there. It shows up on real things. Uh, back around the back. Don't know if I'll be able to get it on camera without moving this whole damn thing. Got the red lenses back here on the tail installed. Yay. Yeah, basically a whole bunch of little bullshit that just needed knocking out at some point. And now that the fuselage is pretty much wrapped, it's as good a time as any. Also got the LAU-10 sorted. The decals finally showed up from Edward, so I was able to put those on and paint this little black patch that seems to be on the bottom of all these things for some reason. I don't know why. Also got the rockets installed. Now, they only give you like a little, you know, three quarters of an inch, essentially, of rocket to deal with. And the instructions would have you paint them white, just all white, with a yellow stripe, which is not the, not the way they're done. Uh, so looking at reference photos, this back here is basically olive drab, yellow stripe, some black, some pale burnt metal, and then pale burnt metal mixed with, what did I use? I think I might have used like Warsaw packed gray green or something. Cause there's this weird sort of mossy green looking anodized type finish on the warheads. So there we go. Those were a pain in the ass to install and get them all somewhat lined up, so I'm glad that is behind me. And basically now the ordnance is ready to be installed. Um, I'm just not ready to install it until I can confidently take it off of the stand because as much as I love this stand and as good a job as it's done holding this thing while I work on it, um, you know, having these mounts right here between the pylons, if I install shit on these, I'm just asking to damage it. So basically my plan is to get the wings weathered, call that a day, flip this thing over, I guess I should go ahead and install the, the tube on the tail too, but uh, flip this thing over and basically as my last act, install the ordinance, call it a day, flip it back over and we're done. So we are getting really, really close. This is definitely the home stretch and it is now time to weather the wings. Okay, so first things first, since this has been sitting in the garage for a couple days, 
accumulating shit it needs a quick brush off so I've got an anti-static brush this is a thing that uh, they sell to photographers to clean off lenses and whatnot basically it does a really good job of sweeping away any little shit that's accumulated on the surface it won't get all of it cause some of it is kind of melded into various coats of things and you kind of have to work it out but for the surface stuff it does a great job now one of my kind of sort of inspirations for the upper surface of this intruder is this VA75 Sunday Punchers intruder. It's a, you know, really pretty famous photo. I believe it's in the uh, Getty Records or something like that at this point. But if you look at the wings, they are filthy. And unlike a lot of other aircraft, they are filthy all the way out to the very tips. So we've got a lot of fun to have here. Uh, one thing I would also note is if you zoom in on the wing fences on the starboard side, they have some lighter stuff built up. It's not just dark crud. It's also, I'm assuming, sand and salt spray and shit like that that just accumulates in these things as they're doing what they do. So we're going to have some fun building some of that stuff up as well. Okay, so starting with our good friend, Matt Effects Thinner. We get some Starship filth. And we're going to do what we've been doing where we kind of draw it around, right? Nothing fancy. And spread it out. Thank God this is one of those aircraft where tide marks are totally cool. <laughs> Otherwise this would be a nightmare. Spread it around a little bit. I basically want to build the gunkiness of it first before I do anything else. And this time we're going to Come in here with some sponge. Move some of this stuff around. And it looks like there's crud on the wings. Lovely. Again, just very light taps. If you push too hard with the stippler, it can start smearing shit around, which we don't really want. A nice random filthy distribution of stuff. Okay, so I've got the port wing in a pretty good spot. It's looking all nice and dirtied up. Now I'm going to go ahead and knock out the starboard wing with the base oiling, just like I did over there. And we'll pick back up in just a moment. Okay, now that the wings have their initial scuzz, it's time to start moving on to some of the detail elements, particularly the wing fences, the hinge, the control surfaces, all that kind of good stuff. First, I think I'm going to play with wing fences. We're starting here with just a little bit of direct sepia, no thinner. Just kind of dragging it right there along the border. Flat brush. Just kind of go stab, 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 stab. A little bit of naphtha here. What I want to do next. Something that needs to be balanced on the weathering here is contrast versus sort of looking natural, right? I think it's something I've talked about before. Where you can have something that's totally realistic at sort of a zoomed in macro view, but then when you step away, all of a sudden it kind of blends in and doesn't look right. 
and so there's that need to kind of stage makeup a little bit just to get that added oomph and visual impact, especially if it's going to be seen in like suboptimal lighting conditions. So you take it to a contest, and contests historically have, at least the ones I've been to, have just really, really bad lighting. And so the subtle gradations of color and tone, they're just going to vanish. So, putting a little bit of extra oomph into it, kind of stage makeup it a bit, can go a long way. But there's also that really delicate balance of pushing it over the edge and making it look really fake outside of those suboptimal conditions. So it's kind of taking a chance, no matter what you do, pretty much. Personally, though, I'm going to take the... Uh, oh, I forget who said it. There was some historical author who was... give you an interview about where you follow and where you deviate from history and basically said you follow history except you have to keep in mind what makes a good story and if it comes to historical correctness and telling a kick-ass story the kick-ass story wins every time I don't know if that's exactly the same, the exact true thing that I would say for uh, weathering, but at the same time, I kind of follow that path. Like, as long as it sticks within the realm of plausibility and is sort of backed up by references, I think if you dial up what's going on a little bit just to get that extra visual kick, you know, that's definitely a stylistic choice, but uh, by all means, go for it. Okay, so now I'm going to focus on the inside of the wing fence, and like I showed on that VA-75 photo, the idea of some sort of essentially dust, kind of, you know, dust and sand and shit sort of building up on the inside. We might have to get out some different oils to capture this. I don't know if the cream brown's going to get me there. Okay, so I'm working on the hinge right now. And this is a bit of an interesting one because the black is not going quite how I want. I think I've got it figured out now. So I was going in, kind of dabbing this like I had been all the other oils, but it was getting too diffuse, maybe just because the black is this alkyd color that lens better than the 502s, probably. And so it was creating a bit of a mess of things. Demonstrate right here. Do, 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 do. So you blend it and it loses definition. But we don't want it like universally black, right? So what I'm finding works well Tap it with a little bit of thinner. You know what, actually, naphtha might work well for this. That way we can get some 
quick drying shit going on. Let's find out. bit of stuff. Yeah, that's giving us the sort of nice filthy look that we're after. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with where the starboard wing has turned out. Now it's time to switch over to the port wing and get it done as well. And then, man, we are almost done with this whole damn build. Okay, this one's going to be a little bit different than that one. I'm not going to have the sand on this wing or the sand dust buildup on this wing anywhere near as much. So let's get going with the Starship Filth. There's one of my stabby brushes. So the tricky part of this is getting it looking dirty, but also a little bit targeted. I mean, most of the shit's going to be coming out of the hinges and kind of building up around it, but it's not... It's turning the whole damn thing like evenly weathered and black, right? Almost there. Okay, so things are looking pretty good. Now we're going to go and add a little bit of AK Interactive Grease. Just a smidge here and there. Very small deposits of it, nothing too fancy. Okay, so I think I'm ready to call the top side of the weathering wrapped. Now, what have we done in all this? Basically, a big oil base across the entire thing with certain focus areas on the fuselage, you know, particularly the wing root areas. Up here with the refueling probe and the probe shadow with the fuel spills from refueling and of course the upper wings with the focus on the hinge areas and the wing fences and particularly this inboard area of the flaps where at least the photos that I have showing the tops of the wings of these things show a lot of gunk buildup. So yeah it is uh, very much in the home stretch. I am going to go ahead and install the tip lights then flip this over and install the ordnance and flip it back over and install the seats, canopy, and the tail tube, and then it should be done. So, thanks for watching this series. Um, I'll be back with one more episode, basically doing a wrap-up, showing final photos, talking about what I liked and didn't like, what I learned, and all that good shit. And then we will be able to move on to whatever is coming next. So, thanks for watching, and be on the lookout for that final wrap-up video.
later.